Remington Steel. The 1980s television show starring Pierce Brosnan hmm. is a better character than Pierce Brosnan's James Bond. I think if he would have played James Bond, uh, I mean, if he would have just played Remington Steel as James Bond, it mm. would have been so much better. Goldeneye is good, don't get me wrong. But uh, yeah, Remington Steel just has some heart. Mm. Like, I don't know if you've seen it before, just it's a weird 1990s TV show where he's just, uh, it's been a long time since I've watched it. Like, he's a, a bumbling spy, right? Kind of. So he is a charlatan. Oh yeah, he's not actually a spy. He's sort of like a, I want to say grifter, I don't actually know what that word means. Um, yeah, it kind of is. So yeah. But he, basically there's a lady, so like the, the, the main setup is that there's a lady who, he just doesn't get enough respect being a private eye mm -hmm. as a woman, so she makes the, she makes her own thing. It's like, oh, I just work for that. I, I just work there. And the owner's name is Remington Steele, the most masculine name I can think of. He is suave, but he's, and he's funny, and he, he knows a lot of movie quotes, but maybe not as, like, actually knowledgeable yeah, about he, a lot of things he, as, as the lady is. Yeah, he's not a spy. He's Laura. Um, yeah, but he does have some stuff that's like, oh, like, he knows, like, jewel thieves and stuff. I think he might be a jewel thief. There's that kind of, a, he, he lived a life of crime before joining up with, uh, with Laura in the show. I should have watched this pilot. This sounds awesome. A, <laughs> the first season is the best. Um, I've just watched, like, random episodes. Yeah, our mom watched the whole series, so like hmm. uh, I've, I've seen a few episodes. But like, first season's the best because they there's someone on the team who is like hesitant about him. He's like, I think that he's up to something, and then after season one, they get rid of him. So oh. kind of took away from like the dramatic tension a little bit. Mm. But like, yeah, I would say like when when Remington Steel was good, it was good. Mm. Yeah, you know, and I, I it's one of those things too that like um, we were talking about it just a minute ago that like I think. Um, it, James Bond could honestly learn lessons from that hmm. um, because that's the thing like it's just it's kind of nice to have characters with flaws hmm. and I mean that's not all the time what you're going into to James I mean into a James Bond movie for uh, definitely understandable hmm. um, but I honestly I would say Casino Royale is my favorite I've watched them all um, but it's it's good because he's got flaws in him yep. yeah, foreign identity yeah debatably also the, the best foreign movie I would agree because uh, he like he's physically capable and like he overcomes he never trains or anything, you know, like he has the skills the entire movie. But it's like that mental thing where he's like, you know, like, I, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I have these skills. Um, yes, so it's, mm -hmm. it's uh, many times the weakness is more important than the, the abilities. Uh -huh. Yes, exactly. All right, we're going to pause this. They do fruit punch. I don't know. You McDonald's guys... does drinks. You guys Only got a one dollar. Oh, yeah, yeah. You guys got a weird thing with fruit punch. I don't love fruit punch as much um, as you guys do. I actually don't love it. I will say that I, I, I'm i going to mix it in Mountain Dew that we have at your house. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fair enough. If you can't have Code Red, get Ghetto Code Red. Hey, man. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah. It's like sometimes hard to find. They got like a, a lot of Code Red. I don't know why. Mm. I don't know. That's fair. It is. I haven't seen it very often. Yeah, that's fair. But anyway, so uh, James Bond. Yeah, the thing is, like, I I love James Bond, but often it is pretty bad. Um, it is, I think, sometimes they just decide not to do character development, and I, it's cool because it's a serial kind of thing. Um, I think, actually, I, I have only read one of the James Bond books, mm. but I, uh, I think it was interesting to see, and this is like a complete tangent, but um, it was interesting to see that the book is more like a detective story than a weird mm. action story. Okay. Um, like it was, so I read Live and Let Die, um, which is already a re freaky weird story. Mm. Um, but Jane Seymour, one of the best Bond Jane girls. Jane Seymour. Jane Epping Seymour. Um, I would argue that she's more attractive in uh, Somewhere in Time. She's a straight up babe at Somewhere in Time. Truly. Really All that. Uh, I know, right? Mama mia. Uh, McDonald's, if you'd like to contact again. us about a, uh, Having sort of a deal going on. <laughs> we just. Uh, I would love to go to McDonald's and you're free to pay me to do that. <laughs> just throwing it out there. Yep. yep I yep. will even order more than the dollar menu. <laughs> this man freaking loves uh, hot and spicy chicken sandwiches. It is the best. Literally any other sandwich. If it's like a, a breaded chicken sandwich, like, what's the point if it's not spicy? That's true. It's true. I'm down for BK, but they don't have spicy, and mm. that hurts me. Actually, they, they might now. BK, if you're listening, 
I don't know they do. Feel um, free to engage in like admitting war for <laughs> our content. For our love. <laughs> for our adoration. I am in, either way. Okay. James Bond. Um, uh, so yeah, I gotta say, the book was very interesting because it was very much more like a, a detective novel. And I mean, in the movies, what they do is like, they have some, like, they do have detective-y type things, but like, oftentimes, like, they go through it real, real quick. And so like, okay. you're not really, it's hard to connect the, the dots, at least for me sometimes in the movies. Mm -hmm. Like, how, why are we here again? Like, I know there's a reason why we came to, you know, Budapest or uh, why we, we went to China. Yeah. I don't remember what it was. I mean, it's cool though, but we don't need to think about it because there's an action scene coming up here now. Yeah, I think especially in the early ones, like they would just like go to places. Yeah. God bless uh, ye old Sean Connery. But I feel like some of those like, <sighs> Holy like crap. Thunderball, they're just like, <laughs> all right, we're here now. All right, we're done. I think even Dr. No, it's kind of like, all right, we're here. Crap, I could do like a video essay. All right, we're going on. <laughs> and go in depth on James Bond. Like, but yeah, they do that. Um, and you're like, what is even Especially happening? I, I think the new ones. I think I don't know. In the... I don't know. Some of the new ones, like I think they did in Spectre. I think they did this mm -hmm. a couple times. So like, there's just like a couple spots. Like I'm not sure exactly how we got there. Like the, yeah. the clues were not super apparent. Um, but in the book, like it was super apparent. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like you have enough time to have like have at least some inner dialogue. Some. I mean, don't get me wrong. They still had the weird stuff, and they they doubled down on some of the weird stuff. I mean, they. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen it. But it's uh it's voodoo James Bond, and so yeah, there's there's all sorts of fun stuff with that. Uh, but uh, I think they actually even had his his weird American friend that shows up in like uh, a lot of the '70s uh, mm -hmm. things and like I guess all the books. Oh, like the his American buddy. I don't remember his name. Felix Leiter. Felix Leiter. Yeah, I think that sequels are good, and I think that as we move into. Um Things with like streaming and like even like the home the time of home video, mm -hmm. I think really started off a rev like a revolution where it's like we can do sequels. They did a combo movie for Universal, all the Universal horror movies. Um, basically, Igor has his brain because he has like cancer or something. He has his brain put into Frankenstein. What? So be an immortal, invincible monster. <laughs> what? Um, and so like literally, there's then a sequel to it with like an Avengers style put all the monsters together. Like, what? They're in like Dracula's castle or something. But like, that sounds it's, like a horrible this is, movie. <laughs> this is never mentioned again. It shouldn't be. Even though, like, in the end, actually, kind of should. <laughs> that actually did happen. Like, it did succeed, and it is Igor in his brain, whatever, like in Frankenstein's body, mm. and they never come back to it ever yeah. again because, and in you know, debate, it makes sense just because, like, you know, you didn't go home and be like, oh, what happened in the last Frankenstein movie? You know? Yeah. Um, but like with home video, and yeah, that's forget like 30 years ago um, more but like now it's streaming especially like it's easy to go back and watch the old things and be conversant and you know because it's not just a movie you saw once and maybe is occasionally re-shown in the theater but like you can be up on the details now and so going forward it's weird that freaking Felix Leiter is different in every movie because like I mean he's like tertiary like we like I know M yeah. I know Q they have names they're in the beginning of every movie and this one's just like oh yeah his CIA contact friend you know and this is partially in defense of Marvel movies because I, I like the fact that they actually <laughs> Marvel movies actually acknowledge previous films, and I think that I, I wish that more films would do that. Such that, um, and it's sort of a negative, the negative example, you can think of all the Jason Statham movies where he's he's just playing Jason Statham. Yeah, well, at the same and we're time, just changing the the the, the scene. You yeah, know, it happens with a scene. lot of actors. I mean, like, that's true. Harrison Ford. He plays Harrison Ford, and that's it. It's true, and I guess I don't know. So I'm not saying like every movie should be. I don't know. They're just ones where it's like it's this, basically the same character. About Abbott Costello, meet the Universal horror movies. Uh huh. Universal horror monsters. Um, mm. They should have. I realize it's weird. Like it's not as shocking if you meet a, a mummy when it's like you already met Frankenstein or whatever. But it was still weird, right? I don't know. It's, it's cool from like, oh yes, like even just loosely acknowledge. But in every single one of those movies, like his name isn't Bud Abbott. His name is. There's one where his name is Chick, which I thought was a weird name. Mm. Uh, maybe it's like Chicken. It's supposed to be he's afraid. I, don't, I didn't really understand that. Yeah. But like they always have different names, slightly different backstories. But like really, they're the same character. And it, I mean, you wouldn't really lose anything. I think you would gain if it was set up as a sequel. Um, yes. So I would say that in defense of sequels, they can be good. Especially now, in the year of our Lord, the future where we have streaming services. So... 
I actually, I, I agree with that to a point. Like, mm -hmm. I like to have continuity and, like, overall story. Okay, like, okay. Like, um, I think some things do get a little bit too episodic and they could be combined to make something a little better. If you're going to be doing it, you know, over and over again, mm -hmm. why not just combine it? It makes sense to me. The trick is just going to be for me that, like, and maybe this is not against movies so much. Mm -hmm. Like, although I do think, in all honesty, sometimes, especially James Bond, going back to James Bond, it can be the problem. Like... You know, we're doing the same kind of thing over and over and over and over again. Yeah. You know, at some point, maybe you should just put it to bed. I have a mixed bag of it. I really like to have, like, big continuities. Like, um, really, like, my, my pet peeve sometimes is actually, um, yeah, just not putting things to, to bed when they should be. Mm -hmm. uh, or going on way too long when there's a long continuity. Um, mostly, and I hate to say it because I know everybody, like, most other people are, like, a fan of it. Um, but really, like, TV shows streaming... I, I think TV shows these days, honestly, just go on forever. Like, yeah, and, true. Like, they don't have that much plot, but they're just gonna keep on going. Yeah. Um, like the uh, if we're, we're talking Marvel, like you were just saying, the Marvel TV shows. I think they had some amazing things in it, some beautiful things in it. Mm. Like Daredevil, like the last season they had out was was really great, but they could have also done it in like half half a season. Like, yeah. they cut out a lot of the extra stuff, a lot of the extra drama, like, in between each of, like, they have a lot of interpersonal drama, which I can, I, I can respect, I think it's, like, has its place, but sometimes it becomes all the show is, like, it's just yeah. like, um, oh man, I'm really mad at you, and that's just gonna be, like, what this episode's about today. Sometimes it's good, and it helps overall character development, it helps progress towards the plot, but... And this is becoming a whole different subject <laughs> rather than just, you know, us talking, talking about... Talking about sequels at Log Running. We, we started talking about Pierce Brosnan, and now we're going to talk about story structure. But, like, the thing for me, like, when I'm watching a story, like, I need to see progress. Mm. Uh, like, so, you know, whenever, like, you, you show something intriguing, you know, you're making a promise, um, and you have, like, all these promises and goals for the character, and if you're not making any progress in a said episode toward those goals or at least enough of those goals, I don't feel, like, uh, fulfilled. Like, and that goes for all mediums. I mean, not just TV, but, like, uh, you know, long-running uh, movie series that, you know, you know, have an overall story. Like, James Bond doesn't have an overall story. Yeah. Um, and it, I don't know that it can. Like, I don't know that it would have an endpoint. Like, maybe, like, if you had, like, you know, something like Blowfield or Spectre or Schwersh. Yeah. Hey, Schwersh. <laughs> having these good times um but uh you know if, if if that was like the big thing like they have a, for maybe a couple movies they've got like a single bad guy but like if they had it uh they've got to move towards it i think they would probably make it a little better thing that's you know um i you can say lots of uh bad things about uh marvel uh, i think that they've done but i think one of the best things they've done is they've had um, little bits and pieces to move towards their end goal um, of end game, which yeah. that's a whole other rant. Um, but I mean, like, yeah, I mean, like, but, like they had Thanos, though. Like we know we're but, going in a direction. Yeah, exactly. It's not like just, like in, here's a random movie. In each movie, like like they they keep telling us, okay, there is something bigger afoot. Like, uh, and that's like the promise they keep telling us. Like, okay, there is something bigger happening. Like you know, they show the first couple movies, and they're like, okay, well, something something's happening. This dude is doing something, and then like you know fairly often, like, even if it's just, like, in the end credits, you know, they're connecting these things together, they're giving out their promise, and a lot of TV shows don't do that, and so, I mean, I know the problem with it is, like, they don't have an end date, I think, yeah, the world of, you know, you put an entire season on, uh, you know, Netflix or whatever it is, all at once, I think that actually can help, because, mm -hmm. like, you're not, like, um, changing things due to ratings a little bit, yeah, um, I would say, if anything, yeah. my one concern would be that you can get some fan feedback. I want to get the picture. Dam. The old Bullard's Dam. It's crap. It's refuse. The new Bullard Dam? Bullard's? This is the good crap, man. Yeah. 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 Let's, let's look at it. Ooh. Cool. Well, this is pretty cool, huh? Yeah, it's a nearby dam. I mean, nothing special, but uh, boaters seem to like it.
there's actually an overlook right over here. I really want to see the dam from a different view. Let's check it out. Definitely a good place to be. Uh, definitely a good place to travel. If you guys are in the area, I would highly recommend it. Hey all, thanks for watching that video. If you guys liked it, make sure you do all the YouTube stuff and we will see you again very, very soon. Thanks, we'll see ya.